I knew also that I didn't want to have to spend all of my time training everything manually. So what I said was we need to capture this whole thing, right? So we had to take these systems and they had to live in manuals, right? And those manuals had to be current. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franson. Hey docs, welcome back to another great episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. We are excited because we're in the middle of a series, Dr. Stephen, on training culture, the six sides of the Rubik's Cube. Doc Stephen, great to be together again today and great to uh, be diving deeper into this subject matter. Super excited. Love talking about training, Dr. Pete. You know, this is one of those things that makes a difference between owning a job and owning a business, right? So if you want to create something that's truly scalable, durable, and eventually transferable, you got to train your people. And like we said on the last podcast, without question, the number one best ROI is the best return on investment of your time, energy, focus, and money is training your team. And we talked about in the last episode how that definitely trumps number two, which is marketing. So Dr. Steven, you're bringing up an important point. If you are tuning into this episode and this is the first of the episodes that you're listening to, make sure you go back and listen to the previous episode where we go into the culture of training, the training culture. That's where we're getting into more of the why behind it. And we drill down into some very specific uh, elements that, that you would want to know before we dive into this episode, which is more of the how, how to execute. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bring it down very practically into the tools and the resources and very practical for you uh, in this training. So make sure you go back and listen to if you have not. If you're a first time listener to the podcast, this happens to be your first episode. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, well, you're, you're in the right place. Uh, we're just thrilled to be with you. Uh, we're, we're, again, just journeying along with you. That's the most amazing part. Uh, we love being chiropractors and we love serving and supporting chiropractors. And this is an amazing way for us to partner with you. And so thank you for being a part of it. And um, again, if you're a regular listener, again, we just, uh, again, thrilled to have you. So um, today is the, the conversation we're continuing again with the premise of that the best investment that you can make is training your team. Like you said, it's the best ROI. So if that's the fact, Dr. Stephen, let's prove that. Okay. So if it's something that's important, then there, you have to have tools for it. You have to have a system. You have to have a structure. And like, I learned early on in chiropractic college, structure enables function. So if we want to have a high functioning practice or remarkable practice as part of remarkable life, and that just can't be talk, we got to walk. What does this look like, Dr. Steven? So again, let's start diving into the, the tools. So this, this boils down to very specific tools and trainings. Yeah. So, um, Dr. B, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look back at just my own experience with like before I really truly embraced training. Like, so, you know, as I've said in the past, you know, in my first several years in practice, I was that control freak perfectionist Clydesdale chiropractor. I was like, I, I wanted to have my hands on everything, not only in everything, but on everything, doing everything I was doing, doing, doing. Um, and I'm a perfectionist by nature. I just want everything to be perfect, right? Just give it to me. I'll do it. That's the Clydesdale in me, which is I've got a strong work ethic. I'm happy to do it. Just, you know, just put it on my back and I'll carry it. Right. So, and that created some level of success for us, but it was wildly unsustainable. Right. And it definitely wasn't scalable and it had nothing to do with durability. Right. So it was all up to me. And when I say me, I mean the collective me, Camilla and I, right. So it was all on our backs. Uh, and we got away with it for a while, but it was clear that it was not going to bring us the life that we wanted, right? So, you know, our premises is about having a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. So what I recognized is I had to grow up and I had to go from being this owner operator that was doing everything to becoming the CEO, right? So, and that ultimately meant two things. I had to take that job and turn it into a business and myself, I had to change my own identity. You know, from being that owner operator, who's happy to do it all myself so I can control it, it can all be perfect, right? To becoming a CEO who surround myself with A players. And with those A players, I could systematize everything. I could delegate to them. I could train them and I could trust them, right? So if I was going to train them and then trust them, I knew also that I didn't want to have to spend all of my time training everything manually. So what I said was we need to capture this whole thing, right? So we had to take these systems and they had to live in manuals, right? And those manuals had to be current. 
and they had to include everything. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is when we do it. This is what we say when we do it, right? So those manuals had to be robust. And we had manuals for each of the domains of the practice, attraction, conversion, and retention. They lived in the operational manage, uh, manuals for the practice for both the doctors, for the DCs, and the CAs, right? So these the original remarkable practice manuals. And then, of course, we committed all of our trainings to video. So we have video um, uh, modules that are set up to teach every single step of every single process. Uh, and then, of course, we organize all of that into a curriculum. And the curriculum lives as the competency checklist. So the competency checklist is where you say, okay, so welcome to the practice to a new hire. Here are all the things that you need to be competent at to be a remarkable CA or a remarkable associate doctor. Here's this list of 60 core competencies that you need to master. And we're going to come alongside you and train you. We're going to equip you, right? So here's your manuals. Here's your modules. Here's your access to what now is the Remarkable Practice Academy. And, you know, we're going to come alongside you and we're going to train together. So here are your competencies. Here's the way this works is we're going to train on this in a linear fashion. We're going to go step by step by step. And as we train together, you're going to get signed off on these things. You're either going to get signed off if you're competent or we're not going to sign you off and we're going to do it again at the next training until you get it right, which when we, when we sign you off, that means we're going to train, we're going to trust you to do this with a patient, right? Real time. So Dr. Pete, we got to make sure that we equip people. Here's exactly what you need to know. So this is our curriculum, right? We have to give them the manuals and the videos so that they can train themselves. They can study and, and get ready and prepare for training, which is where you show up and role play. And this is where we critique them. And this is where they experience true growth. Dr. Steven, this is so powerful. I'm, I'm remembering uh, the film about Ray Kroc and the McDonald's, and it's a terrible example as far as healthy goes. But I remember in that film where they were out on the tennis court and they were drawing the... Um, the flow of exactly how we could serve the most hamburgers most efficiently with all the people in the kitchen and blah, blah, blah. Right. So this is really where this is, this is what training is. It, I love that scene. It was just a brief scene in the, in the film, but I, I remember thinking about, it, I'm like, man, those guys were kept going over and over and around and around. How can we make it a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And they're making these minor tweaks behind the scenes. So they could do just a little bit better. They could cut off seven seconds, three seconds off of a person's order to when they receive their order. Like they are thinking about every detail that's they, and they're in the business not of saving lives. They're in the business of feeding people unhealthy food. Okay, so imagine you are in the business of saving lives, and when business is good, everybody wins. That's a you've got to train like that, right? When you train like lives depend on it because they do. Doctors, come on, we we identified in the last episode. There's three categories of doctors who are not trained. They either never train, right? So you never develop the culture because you didn't have the beliefs, the values or even understanding like the behaviors. We're talking behavioral now, which is these are the tools. You still have to have the belief and the values to implement the tools. So this is a, a culture is your why, that's your heart. We always talk about heart, head, hands, feet. We can get into the hands and feet. Heart and head have to be engaged. So again, we engage this way, but it always starts high. So docs, if you find yourself listening to this episode and you, you, have, you don't train or you've stopped training or you're more of that owner operator mindset, which Dr. Steven, you talked about, that perfectionist, um, that Clydesdale that you referenced, you also talked about, we in, a, in one of the previous episodes, the high, I think it was in one of the leadership episodes, we talked about how doctors who are high in philosophy, right? They tend to uh, maybe, you know, bypass some of the values of this because they say, well, my, my, my commitment to the principle, that's more important. So let's just do it that way. It's not okay. You can't just bowl past people on a day one and just say, I'm not going to get the empathetic connection. I'm going to bypass that. I'm just going to go right to, here's my recommendations because without ever interference, you're going to be healthy. So I don't care what's going on with you. Like, here's the truth. People, that doesn't work like that. It also doesn't work like that with your team. You can't just be like, you stand here and you greet people and, and you tell them, you know, you know, smile and then tell them this. No, 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 no. There's a lot more layers to it. And just like a, a patient needs an empathetic connection, your team members need the empathetic connection. They need to know their why. They need to know the, the big, big idea. They need to then know how to deliver it. So we are meeting you right here and saying, hey, you got to have some tools. You don't send somebody to the job without a saw if you're expecting them to cut down trees or an ax. You're like, what are you going to do, push them down? It's like, you've got to give people the tools to be able to do the work. We hire A players, we equip A players. This is how it gets more awesome. So Dr. Steven, I, I just want to share quick my a story too. And then I want to dive into uh, this idea of the curriculum and the competency checklist. There's, there's a lot more to uncover there. So for me, 
similar to you, uh, you know, grab the thing, throw it on the back, let's climb this mountain. And I realized I was dragging people up a mountain. <laughs> it was a lot heavier that way. Um, so, you know, the, the shift of saying, okay, things have to be different here. So my thing was, I used to, I would, I would say my, my little tool was surprise trainings. <laughs> okay. So we used to, I used to keep it from my team. I didn't expose to them what we'd be training on on Monday or whatever day we were training on it. I liked to surprise them. And I thought that that was cool. Pop quiz. Everyone loves a good pop quiz. Yeah. Yeah. And my team would come sweating (laughs) to the trainings because we had some rules in place. Like we always train. It was on the schedule. There was, we never compromised. It always happened. And we trained hard and like, it was the real deal. And I grilled them, uh, but they also didn't know what we were going to be training on. So that was not the best approach. So the owner operator is more reactive. Now I wasn't reactive, but I was kind of, I would say I was a version of reactive where I looked at what's going wrong in the practice right now. And, and then I would say, let's train on that. Now, Dr. Steven, there is value to having the capacity to double click on or double, you know, go deeper on something. If there is a real issue, like an urgent issue that you need to deal with. So having a curriculum doesn't mean we're stuck in this rhythm and we can't, we can't get out of it because yeah, we're going in like being rigid, right? So it's not a rigid linear. And then just like the narrative with a patient, we know the narrative should be, they start on day one, they go within 72 hours, the whole thing. We know that's what we want, but we also know there are exceptions and we as CEOs, and we're not going to get into the exceptions today because that, that is a whole other training, but the curriculum is, is built in a linear fashion that goes along the narrative of the patient path, which starts with attraction, goes through the conversion process, and goes through retention, right? So let's dive into this because as a CEO, the attribute of a CEO, the attribute is leadership, right? The leadership attribute is to create clarity, right, for your team. That clarity follows a curriculum. And so this way, everyone knows where we're at and there's a flow, there's a rhythm, so, Dr. Steven, let's talk about the proactivity that a CEO has to have with, with following a curriculum and implementing this in the practice. Okay. So, um, Doc, you need to know the, all the positions on your team, right? So, you need to know the core functions of your business, the, all the positions on your team. Let's say it's a check-in CA, a check-out CA, the tech CA, and the back office CA, for example, the, which we call the Chica, the Coca, the Tika, and the Boca, right? So, the, each one of those players on your team has a set of responsibilities, right? So they will have their own competency checklist. Now you might have associate doctors where let's say you have a business builder associate doctor and their job is to go out into the community and create new relationships and generate new potential new patient leads into the practice. And maybe they're involved in the conversion process, or you have a caregiver doctor who's in the office and her job is to take great care of the patients and be a great chiropractor, be a great caregiver. And maybe their emphasis is on building value, creating enduring relationships and connection and retention, right? So you're going to have different job descriptions inside your practice if you're really operating like a a business, right? So each one of those job descriptions comes with a set of responsibilities and therefore should have a competency checklist. Like this is what it takes to be a great back office CA. This is what it takes to be a great check-in CA. So we've got all of those duties delineated and we have each one of them lives in a competency checklist. So as a CEO, when I'm hiring somebody for my teams, I make sure that I'm always, I'm very aware that who I'm looking for. If I'm looking for a check-in CA, they're different from a check-out CA. They're different from a tech CA. They're different from a back office CA. So I hire accordingly, right? So that, that person is going to have a competency checklist that outlines exactly what they need to be trained in. Same thing with an associate doctor. If I know I'm hiring a business builder, they're going to have a different competency checklist than a caregiver would, right? So let's say that I'm hiring a new associate doctor. We're going to start with a competency checklist that delineates 60 competencies. And one of the first things that will happen during the onboarding of an associate doctor is, here are your 60 competencies. Dr. Pete, if I was hiring you as an associate doctor, number one, I'd be super stoked and wildly blessed. (laughs) But I'd be bringing to your office and I'd be like, okay, Dr. Pete, I want you to be remarkable. I want you to have the best opportunity to be awesome here, right? So I'm going to come alongside you. I'm going to train you and equip you. This is what it's going to take for you to be awesome here. This is your competency checklist. 
here are the 60 things you need to be awesome at. And we're going to train you. We're going to come alongside you. We're going to equip you. We're going to develop you. You're going to be awesome at these things, right? All you got to do is apply yourself, right? So there's 60 competencies. We're going to get these things signed, trained up on and signed off on over the next 90 days. So let's do the math. The first 30 days, let's do the first 20. The second 30 days, let's do the next 20. And the third 30 days, we're going to do that. So by the end of the quarter, we're going to be signed off on all 60 competencies, right? So what I'm giving them is clarity. This is how you get to be awesome, right? Here's your manual. There's your DC manual. Here's your access to the Remarkable Practice Academy for all your training videos. Here is our office training schedule. You can see that we, the doctors, we have team meeting on Mondays. We do doctor's training on Tuesdays. And then we do team trainings with role playing on Thursdays, right? So it's super clear. He knows exactly what it takes to be remarkable, right? So, and we come alongside them and make sure they have all the tools that they need. Clarity is the greatest accelerator and the competency checklist creates extreme clarity. Wow. Thank you for unpacking this, Dr. Steven. So let's just, let's just hold right here. So as you're listening to this, maybe you're out running, maybe you're driving in your car and some of you are like, I need to pull over <laughs> or I just need to stop for a minute, Dr. Steven, because it can be a little bit overwhelming. So you, know, you start hearing this and you're like, wait a second, I went to school to learn how to you know, remove the interference and let God do the healing. I, I remove the bone, that type of thing. Like this is way out of my league. Like, what are you talking about? Like to me, I went to school to become a chiropractor. I want to help people, right? That's what people say when you stood up on your first day. Like, why are you becoming a chiropractor? Because I want to help people. Um, this sounds like, could sound like a lot of work to a lot of people. It is a lot of work actually, but you know, it's not hard. Business isn't hard. It's organized. So we've, it's got to be organized in a way. Dr. Steven, a couple things. One, you know, my first thought when you were talking, I'm thinking about what you're saying, by the way, was I was thinking about the football analogy that you've given in the basketball analogy. And I'm like, okay, there's a clear difference between a, a center or a nose guard and a tailback and a quarterback. There's a clear difference. You could see the difference. You could smell the difference. You could see it. It's, it's so clear. Whether down the field or off the field, you could just see it. And here's the deal. But they know what they're supposed to do every single moment of the game and what it looks like when, when they're not in the game, when they're on the sidelines, they know what they're supposed to be doing, right? Studying film, connecting with their tribe, getting with their coach or their region of the business, like whatever. You know, then they're back on the field. They know exactly where they're supposed to stand. Imagine like the nose guard center was like on the, out by the wide receiver. Like, dude, we got to go right here by the hash right here. <laughs> where you got to give me the ball. Like, it's just crazy to think about. It's ludicrous, really, when you think about sports. And I have children, small children. You know what we're doing during the week, multiple times a week? Practicing. We go to practice. And we do one game, but multiple practices. Why? Because they're little kids. They need to know. Like, no, you run to first base, not the third base, right? Or you kick the ball to that goal, not our goal. Or you try to, yeah. You know. So we know this, but you know, we're just not building this into our, our businesses. And we're not getting into the level of detail and depth that we need to. Again, we're in the business of saving lives, folks. You're in the business of saving lives, Doc. And it matters. And your team, they are in the business of saving lives. Remember, each position it has a clinical role. Every single position, even if it's an administrative position, we talk about this. So this curriculum of 60, some of you are like, so Dr. Steven, let's, let's, let's help some folks out right here. Because the first thing that's kind of mine is like, I need some help with that, right? I mean, that's literally the first thing that I'm thinking, the majority of listeners are thinking, I need some of that. Like, how, how, where do I get something like that? Like, how do I get the help with this? Because we're not going to leave you hanging. So here's my observation, Pete. And I don't think this is a theory, okay? This is my observation. You're going to, your doctors are stopping and they think of themselves, man, that sounds like a lot of work. That sounds hard, right? It sounds like a lot of time, energy, focus, money, right? Like that's what we start thinking about is when you talk about training and developing your people, right? Here's been, this is my observation. You're spending that time, energy, focus, and money anyway, right? Like look around, like is what you're doing right now easy, <laughs> right? So aren't you spending a lot of time right now? You're spending the time. The question is, is, is the time being spent in the right spot and is it productive? I think what varies is the outcomes. Mm. So you are going to spend the time. You are going to spend the focus. You are going to spend the energy and you're going to spend the money. My question is, is what are you spending it on? Mm. Because that's really the, what's, what's really going to be different is your experience and your outcomes. And remember, the, the people listening to this call right now, you're interested in this call is because you want to make the shift from owning a job to owning a business. Yeah. And you personally want to transform from being the owner operator to being a CEO. Well, this is how CEOs operate. 
They look at the landscape of their business. They recognize, they understand the core functions of their business and how they add value to the community. They recognize that the purpose of the business is to solve a problem for another person. They surround themselves with A players who execute A systems and they, and they invest in A level training. So ultimately docs know that the greatest return on investment for you as a business owner for the quality of your life is training your team. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable.